In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you all. We welcome you with great joy to the Mass we celebrate this glorious summer morning. Welcome. We're going to dismiss the younger members of the congregation, and little Gennardo and Gabrielle will come to receive the Word of God. It's in a language especially designed for their high level of understanding. So I think Gerardo, oh, here he is, yeah, that's good. So just come forward, Gerardo. Okay. And Gerardo, you can take the book and you share it with your friends. Today they're going to do the rosary. We're going to study the rosary. This looks a bit like a bag of salted peanuts. It's actually rosary beads made by the religious sisters who live down just opposite the cathedral. They're, they're called the Sisters of the Poor, and this is something they do in their spare time, making rosemary, rosary beads for young children. So I was supposed to go to a little uh, Gabriel, but he's sped away. So, thank you, that's lovely. I so said, we call to mind our many sins and we dismiss the younger members of the congregation now so they can go upstairs and join their peer group. There's two groups, aged four to six, in the upper room, and another group, aged seven onward. So please join them. And so we call to mind our sins, confident that our Lord understands our human weaknesses and our frailties. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I had greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. God Almighty Father, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill.
glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good Peace to people of good The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Is the sixth Sunday of Easter or the readings and prayers begin on page two seven four? 274 and now the opening prayer. Grant Almighty God that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive and remembrance we may always hold to in whatever we do through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please take a seat for the readings. In the first reading, if people want to join the Christian community, we mustn't burden them with unnecessary rules, unnecessary regulations. Ease their passage. Make their journey to God easy. Lots of support. Let's listen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some men came down from Judea and taught the brothers, unless you have yourselves circumcised in the tradition of Moses, you cannot be saved. This led to disagreement, and after Paul and uh, Barnabas had had a long argument with these men, it was arranged that Paul and Barnabas and others of the church should go up to Jerusalem and discuss the problem with the apostles and elders. Then the apostles and elders decided to choose delegates to send to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The whole church concurred with this. They chose Judas, known as Barsabbas, and Silas, both leading men in the brotherhood, and gave them the, this letter to take with them. The apostles and elders, your brothers, send greetings to the brothers of pagan birth in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia. We, ha we hear that some of our members have disturbed you with their demands and have unsettled your minds. They acted without any authority from us, and so we have decided unanimously to elect delegates and to send them to you, with Barnabas and Paul, men we highly respect and who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accordingly, we are sending you Judas and Silas, who will confirm by word of mouth what we have written in this letter. It has been decided by the Holy Spirit and by ourselves not to saddle you with any burden beyond these essentials. You are to abstain from food sacrificed to idols, from blood, from the meat of strangled animals, and from fornication. Avoid these, and you will do what is right. Amen. This is the word of the Lord.
A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. In the spirit, the angel took me to the top of an enormous high mountain and showed me Jerusalem, the holy city, coming down from God out of heaven. It had all the radiant glory of God and glittered like some precious jewel of crystal clear diamond. The walls of it were of a great height and had 12 gates. At each of the 12 gates, there was an angel. And over the gates were written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. On the east, there were three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. The city walls stood on 12 foundation stones each one of which bore the name of one of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. 
I saw that there was no temple in the city, since the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb were themselves the temple, and the city did not need the sun or the moon for light, since it was lit by the radiant glory of God, and the Lamb was a lighted touch for it. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus will come and he will make his home in my house and in my heart. Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him and we shall come to him and make our home with him. Those who do not love me do not keep my words, and my word is not my own. It is the word of the one who sent me. I have said these things to you while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything. I remind you of all that I have said to you. My peace I bequeath to you, my own peace I give you a peace the world cannot give. This is my gift to you. And do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me say, I'm going away and shall return. If you loved me, you would have been glad to know that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you this now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. <clears throat> This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to your Lord Jesus Christ. Please take a seat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We ask God to bless these few simple words. <clears throat> when I lived in Orkney, we in the Northern Isles there, quite near the Arctic Circle, okay, we were the only Catholic family in the city. Mum, Dad, three kids. We walked to Mass every Sunday morning. You could set your clock by it. The Barry family, they're all dressed up. They go to Mass, it's nine o'clock in the morning. And I was never aware of any other Catholic kids at the Kirkwell Grammar School. Peter, Jane and Donald, we were the only ones. And as you entered our house, just at the front door, we had a little holy water stoop. It was fixed to the wall, and we dipped our fingers in every time we went, and every time we left, and we made a little sign of the cross. And of course, visitors to the house had no idea whatsoever what this little ornament was for. This is true. They thought that's where the budgie came for a drink. <laughs> I had a little budgie, it was lovely, it was blue. It was name was Pasha, and it flew around the house all day long. And the people thought, well, when Pasha's 
hungry or thirsty. He just sits on the holy water stoop and he slakes his thirst. They had no idea. But the little container of the holy water stoop had a little blue cross painted on the side. And one of the kids thought, is your little budgie a Catholic? He said, well. But to most of us, the Catholic family, the Marys, were just a bit of a curiosity. Yeah. No other Catholic families in Kirkwall. But we always had a very strong sense that God lived in our house. And that's in the readings today. God will make his home among us, and he will be our advocate. What does an advocate do? An advocate is a lawyer, and he's a good lawyer who speaks on my behalf so that I get a good sentence. He'll be my advocate before the Father in heaven. Father Peter, he wasn't so bad. He was a bit absent-minded. He forgot things. Maybe his jokes were terrible, but he wasn't bad. So be lenient on him, a good advocate will say. And my 10 years in purgatory might be reduced to five years or even less. A good advocate, the Holy Spirit, pleads to God the Father on my behalf. He understands my human frailties. So we had in our very own house, our very own house lawyer lived among us, God's Holy Spirit. He made his home among us. And this was promised some time before our Lord departed this, this earth. He said, he's going to leave. You know what it's like when a visitor comes to the house, they've got a big heavy suitcase. And after a few days, you wonder, when are they going to leave, you know? Have they overstayed their welcome? And you're far too polite to say, you know, there's a train at half past five tomorrow, you know. You wonder when they're going to go. Other visitors come and you want to hold on to them. Oh, please stay another month, another year. You, know, you enjoy their company so much. Well, the apostles begin to panic because Jesus is going to leave them, you know. But he won't, you know. He will come and live in my house and earthly in my heart today. He will come and live in your hearts and in your homes. Don't throw him out, please. Don't throw him out. Don't do anything really stupid, you know. Thieving and adultery, yeah. You know, thieving doesn't kill you. Having money that's stolen, but it's the deception, isn't it? Are you going to get caught? what will your sentence be? Adultery doesn't kill you, but the deception might. Hiding it, your marriage, when you're going to get caught, will there be a prison sentence and so on. Don't throw away the Holy Spirit, maybe a little click in the mouse and you're into dangerous territory and your life can fall to pieces. Maybe gossiping and bullying in the marketplace. Hold on to God's Spirit as long as we can. So Bishop Hughes said a very interesting thing on Tuesday. He got the priests of the, of the city together for the first time in two years. And we were talking about evangelization. How do we as priests evangelize? And Bishop Hughes said, it helps if you have a hobby, if a priest has a hobby. So we have a priest who loves cricket. He plays it to a very high standard. Yeah? He meets lots and lots of people. We have a priest who does Taekwondo, Father Bruno, comes into Aberdeen, I think he does it twice a week. He tells me he's dog got a blue belt with a red line running through it. Is that high or low? I've got no idea, I've never done it. But it gives him contact with dozens and dozens of other people. And for me, little country parish, half a dozen families, I always joined the golf club, you know. Was I evangelizing? Met lots of people, all of them non-Catholics, but I was maybe the only one who wasn't swearing, who wasn't getting angry, who wasn't gossiping. Maybe I was evangelizing. Maybe I was a very good, wisdom, good witness. And how else would I behave if I felt that God's Spirit lived within me? So here's my little story for today. It's a silly story, okay, you'll just bear with me. I played golf at Aviemore in the Botagarten Golf Club, and I played competitive golf. And uh, 
One day a competition, first hole, anybody golfers here, you know what it's like, you hit the ball, four iron, 174 yards, a hole in one. I couldn't believe it, a hole in one. You know, the, the tradition is you go back to the clubhouse, you buy 40 ounces of a bottle of whiskey, <laughs> you put it on the counter so that everybody else comes and they help themselves to a little bit of your whiskey, okay? That's the, that's the thing, so I did that, put the bottle on the counter, anybody can help themselves, that's my little gift to them. However, I finished the round and uh, as I went back to the clubhouse, the greenkeeper came out, greenkeeper, and he said, uh, Father Peter, he said, there's none left. There's not a drop in your bottle left, he said. And with a little twinkle in his eye, he said, the Protestants have drunk it all. <laughs> <laughs> so they were indeed spirit-filled. <laughs> so just to summarize, if you have the spirit in your heart, Keep them there for heaven's sake, and you will never, ever be alone. Never. Many people have asked to be prayed for today. Northcote Lodge, some of the residents are watching today in the little chapel in front of a very large screen. They watch every Sunday. They love to see us gathered here. They love the singing. They love it. So they've asked Anne, Claire, Isabel, and David have asked to be remembered. And we think of Alec, would love to be at Mass today, but he just can't manage, got a phone call. We asked for the end of the incredibly stupid, foolish, diabolical war that goes on today. Please God, change. Please God, change people's hearts, please. And we have a young lady, Marion. Lovely girl, can I say without embarrassing or shaming her? Marion, she's going to be 16 tomorrow. She wants to be a doctor. And so she spoke to me before Mass, and I promised I would make a little petition for Marion. So Marion, happy birthday, and please realize your dreams. Realize them. Give a round of applause. <laughs> And today, I think, is Autism Awareness Day, I think it is. Uh, so we ask God to bless all of our children. They're all equally loved. Without exception, there's not one who isn't loved. They all are. And we walk life's journey side by side with every single one. Thank you. Lord, hear us. And we ask your ladies' intercession in these perilous times in which we live. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Refer to him is number 443. We'll sing it together.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer which earth has given, and human hands have made. It'll become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. And by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And Lord, wash away all my iniquities. Cleanse me, Lord, from all of my sins. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, purify together with the sacrificial offerings of bread and of wine, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, and mighty and eternal God, especially at this time when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death, and by rising, he restored our life. And so overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people rejoices in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we acclaim. We'll say the second Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
by the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in the same way when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once for giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. And let us proclaim together the mystery of our faith. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. And bring us to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, with you, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your face. And in mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. I may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We'll stand and pray with great confidence to the Father, using the words which Jesus, our Saviour, taught us. Temptation, 
Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all anxiety. As you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We're going to offer each other a sign of peace, and then we'll turn around and offer a sign of peace to the church upstairs. They will offer the sign of peace through the little eye of the camera to those people watching the streamed mass this morning. So, peace be with you all. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, I eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring me condemnation, but health in mind and in body. This is the Lamb of God, who takes away all the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion hymn this morning is number 338, Love.
We ask God's blessing on those people watching prayerfully at home today. May Jesus come into their hearts. The communion antiphon, if you love me, keep my commandments, says the Lord, and I will ask the Father, and he will send you another paraclete to abide, to abide with you forever. Hallelujah. We thank God in a moment of precious silence for his many gifts. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, you restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Jesus. Increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Easter sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. The dear people find all the intimations and the timetable in the bulletin, and you can take a copy here to read at your own leisure. All the times of Mass during the week. We have a Lectio Divina on Wednesday. We have a Youth Cafe beginning a week on Friday. All the details are given here. And a Parish Council meeting on Tuesday. Any pressure with a request uh, that we consider a particular item, then please speak to us and we will indeed consider it during the Paris Council meeting. Thank you very much. The Lord be with you. Amen. May the peace and blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come down upon me, your unworthy servant, and upon the people gathered here prayerfully this morning. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. My dear people, thank you for your presence. Thank you for watching at home online. Uh, there's tea and coffee. We made very, very welcome upstairs immediately after Mass. So let's enjoy the day as best we can. Thank you. Our final hymn is 487. 